in a place that you never expect to find yourself. To open the window and look out onto North Korea still boggles my mind even though we're days into the trip now. Our guides Kim and Che have definitely warmed up to us and because of that I think it's going to open up parts of this country. Now we're going to have a chance to dive into some of the culture. Every step of this world trip has taken us further away from home to places we never expected to see. Two years ago, I would never have understood how much this journey would change me. This is why we travel. This is the reason that we're out here. Justin and I graduated from our high school 10 years ago. We never thought we'd be setting foot back in a high school ever again. Certainly not one in North Korea. Yeah, I'm getting old, I'm getting old. I know, I know, I know! Pick the cameraman's head up. Are you alright? <laughs> oh, yeah. Makes me look good, but the ball goes up. I actually did get my fingers to it, if you actually noticed. The we still got more reset. Yeah. Gotta go. Recess is officially over and now we actually got had to go into school in and learn something. We're late. You're in trouble because look how dirty you are. <laughs> Playing too much at recess, so now we are in school and we have to do kind of detention. Which will actually be good for us because they're gonna to try to teach us all the words that we need to learn that we haven't learned yet. So detention, but it's probably for the best. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. 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 Well, good morning, class. In Korean, 안녕하십니까. 안녕하십니까. You say, 안녕하십니까, 선생님. 안녕하십니까, 선생님. 선생님. <laughs> you try. You must be careful in the lesson. You, know, you are rude students. In Korean, me an ham ni da. Ni I'm sorry means me an ham ni da. We had a chance to go to a secondary school, so we're joking around, having fun, and they're laughing, and we're laughing, and it was awesome because having interactions with the kids, they could see that we weren't any kind of threat at all. We're just there to have fun. You know, those moments I'm looking for are just the real moments, and I think that's something amazing. Concentrate the lesson. Teacher will kick you out of the class. <laughs> just to see if they are good, do we have a chalk? Okay, that's a bird. <laughs> Come up here. Camera. Yeah, camera. 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 Camera.
glass. In Canada, we play ice hockey. Ice hockey. What do you play? I play football. Football. I play volleyball. Volleyball. I play basketball. Very good. Okay. What's this? Football. Go! Okay, five, England. Oh. <laughs> Means so. Na man. Si ta. Si ma na si ta. Kamsa kamsa nida. Kamsa nida. Hey. Goodbye. <laughs> Judges at a talent competition. We got the two washed-up, somewhat celebrities from North America, Somewhat. and then we got the uh, the British snippy guy. Yeah. When you go to schools like this, you're going to get a lot of uh, even in restaurants. You're going to get a lot of performance. It's very much part of the culture. Everyone here plays an instrument. Everyone, apart from one person. But your parents tried to teach you the uh, accordion. Accordion, and mm -hmm. you're about as good as what? You're about as good as a chocolate teapot. Not, not much good. There's that snippy British guy we're looking so for. It's a disgrace. Do you play an instrument? <laughs> yeah. Oh, everyone here is immensely talented. It's standard. It's what I expect every time I come to a school. People will stand up and sing. And I just expect that everywhere I go now. I feel like the Queen. The smell of wet paint and musicians everywhere. For a solid week, we are treated like royalty. Come on, you queens. Let's get going. <laughs> Good morning. Today we're actually going to the west coast of the country. We have for your delights what you need, of course, for a fun-packed holiday. One of the lads asked, is it possible to see a water bottling factory? Well, it is. Yay! Water bottle! Yes. yes. Water bottles. I love water bottles. Water. 
I'm gonna drink so much water when I get there. I'm gonna drink all the water. I can't wait. It's gonna happen today. Today's my day. Are you excited about the water bottle factory? Uh, yes, yeah, so kind of. Here we go. The water bottle factory. Whoa. Oh my lord. My, oh, my. oh my lord. Oh my. I'm an English learner, so... <laughs> You're doing good! You, you speak better English than I do, because I can't speak English. So. What do you say? Why, why are we here? It's almost why, you know, I should go and probably climb Mount Everest. It's because it's there, but that takes a hell of a lot of effort. Whereas seeing a <laughs> water bottle factory is sort of relatively easy. I, I would agree to that, Stephen. I would really agree to that. I mean, it's not really a question I think anyone can answer. Um, why are we visiting it? Because it's here. <laughs> Bottles, warming the bottles to the surface of the bottle. Here is the labeling machine, the bottles, the inter box. Here. <laughs> They've got this technical schematic of how to put pure water into a bottle. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> it looks like they're making parts for a space shuttle or something. Can we see the real thing? Yes. I think in here is where the real magic happens. Is that how the bottles come? Yes, see, see, oh I knew. Oh, <laughs> that is actually pretty cool. <laughs> Can I have one of these? So what happens here? The I'm assuming this gets heated up to a point where it just then they just put air into it and it just blows up yeah. to it forms the way they want it. I know everything about this. Goes here. Goes to here. That's where the heater bottles six by six. The uh, pressure machine thirty two pascal. The pressure. Mm -hmm. Uh, the machine for arranging the bottles, then it goes up for injection, fills the water into the bottle. This bottle now has water inside it. Now it would be safe to call this a water bottle instead of just a bottle. And the water bottle will continue on to the next process. This sign up here, what does that sign say? Uh, let us make every piece of the product for our country and people. Oh. Can you get a lid? These are the assembled boxes, which marks the end of the tour. Uh, the bottles would go into the boxes uh, after being filled with water. And uh, that concludes um, the, the tour of the water bottle plant. And uh, I've learned a lot about water bottles. I'm going for the vertical one now. Funzo. Back to, back to reality. <laughs> I feel like this is a press conference about our findings on water. Thank you. It's our spell. Four scores in seven years. <laughs> <of job>. <laughs> <laughs> I came looking for oh, yes, the charter. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, what have I got this job? Four scores and seven years ago, <laughs> we set off on a journey to explore wonderful countries and meet the people and exchange friendship. This visit to Kangsa Water Factory has been extremely rewarding and we wish the company much success and hope to be imbibing the glorious mineral water in our home countries. Fantastic, thank you very much. We've been doing a lot of joking about visiting a water bottle factory. They've decided to show us things that seem to have recurring themes about being industrious and being successful in agriculture. You know, this country did suffer severely in the Korean War and there's more uh, Nepal used in this war uh, than in Vietnam. Everything you go to is, is about the success and the rebuilding of a country, basically, you know, as they see it, from the ashes. So for them to suddenly come up with an industrial, you know, achievement like this, to them it's very exciting and, you know, they're proud of it. You are going to see a country that is trying to instill, not only in itself, but into you, this work ethic that we are building to, you know, create the perfect revolution. And the revolution is going on now. They're trying to create this society that is absolutely the top and this independence is, is massively important to them. Yes, 
we're just outside of Pyongyang. We've come to a cooperative farm here. As with everything else, there's a statue here to pay tribute to first before we get to see the cooperative farm itself. This cooperative farm was visited by our president Kim Il-sung 85 times. He led this cooperative farm to become the model farm of the country in comprehensive mechanization. This is the strangest tour of a farm I've ever had so far. I kind of feel more like a, a health inspector going through something than I do a, a tourist. On the surface, it seems very, very dry to be doing what we're doing, but to be honest, it's incredible. You don't get this anymore. This is a look into a country and a society that just does not exist anywhere else on this planet any longer. That spade was used by our president to help the farmer. It's fascinating to be able to come through and see what they want to show us, what they feel is important to show us, what they're proud of. When our president Kim Il-sung was visiting this farm in 1958, he was sitting on this straw mat with the farmers. He said that when we sit close to each other, then we can understand and we can develop the relations more. So he sat with the farmers as the usual people used to do. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get a snapshot at a society that may not be around much longer. And if it is, it's still going to be really the only one in the world like it. I, I guess that was a tour of a farm. I kind of just kind of started tuning everything out. I thought we were going to see a farm. I thought I was going to see some animals. I thought we were going to see the workers and stuff like that. But uh, none of that. It was a lot of information. But it was going in one ear and out the other. And... Halfway through, I'm just, whatever, I was just taking pictures. The funny thing with this continuing trend of this kind of being the weirdest farm I've ever visited, because it's a cooperative, there are a lot of people here, there's over a thousand farmers and their families that live here. Look at me. Beautiful. The kids go to school here, and there's a kindergarten here that we're going to pop in on and visit, which should be a fun time. That's crazy. The kids usually eat the stuff up. The kids didn't smile. Yeah, they, they have to pull the focus, concentrate the focus, concentrate the lesson. I'm going to crack one kid. I'm going to make one kid smile. With this pan of half, one kid smile. Bye-bye. Okay. Back to lessons. We have more kids coming up. All I'm looking for is a reaction from one kid. Because that last group, they're in a lesson and they were so focused. So let's see if we can get a reaction out of these kids.
every other time we've done anything with kids, it's always been smiles from ear to ear. Here, they were very disciplined. The kids are on their best behaviors, and I understand that. But I thought I'd at least get a couple smiles out of them. I figured, you know, if I brought that panda hat, that should be a pretty easy way of interacting with the children. But me coming in as a jackass, obviously it's not going to fly that well, but I thought for sure I'd get some reactions out of the kids. So this farm has 1,000 hectares and the paddy fields is 600 hectares. So uh, they're expected to uh, produce 9 tons and a half from every hectare. So at the end of the September, we finish the uh, harvest. Finished. Oh, one more, I was on this thing. Can you do it one more time? One more time. Yeah. Can you tell uh, to the panda? <laughs> So um, uh, there are many pandas in the farming field and uh, the, the panda like me and can work and we produce the rice uh, but we don't eat the rice although we, uh, we like the bamboo a lot. Uh. Are you in a zoo or something? No, no, no. Uh, I skipped it from the zoo because I... Skip stories. Time to go to the zoo. Okay, why don't we keep the, okay, keep the uh, on the bus? Now it's a panda group and uh, I'm a panda guy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This farm isn't so bad after all. City, there's not much traffic and out here you know we have a highway at 16 lanes and we're the only vehicle on it. They put it down to uh, basically oil shortages and again that's to them it's the American blockades and also basic restrictions on goods getting in from the outside world. <laughs> Best nine dollars I've ever spent. One of the fun fairs, like four or five around the city, and this is the Manyong Day one. I am sure we will find some rides of absolute delight. Rides of death. It looks like the scariest rides in the world. You're defying death just getting on these things. I don't know if I should have a tetanus shot before I should get on any of them, or you know, write a will right now. This is my <laughs> favorite fun fair park on earth, and you're laughing at it, and this is your punishment. I like the way there's eight year old kids here as well. This is a space training program. There's no like actual like harness or anything. You're gonna be thrown out the side and squashed through the edges. Oh my god! Don't put your hand on the cage because your hand, your skin gets sucked, sucked right through off. through this, sucked <laughs> into the cage. That's why you're in this yellow area. It's very important. As long as you're not in the blue area, you're fine. But I keep waiting for them to put some like doorway in there. No, nope, I guess not. <laughs> Space machine. <laughs> Outfitted, of course, with some cannons. Our, our airplane will be crashed, okay? Don't shoot me.
I gotta check the oil first. Oh, that's, yeah, everything seems in order. Spark plug, not too bad. Wheelie! Woo! Go, girl! Wheelie! <laughs> Blake surfing. What can I do it doing a wheelie? Wheelie! 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 Uh, we'll pay for the damages. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> This thing never actually comes to a stop. Like, it's still rocking, and that's when you board it. Yeah. Hey, you know, hi. Apparently you can. We still haven't got up yet. No, and it won't stop. <laughs> yeah, I hope okay. Yeah, have fun. Please exit down the ramp and to your right and enjoy the rest of your day at DPRK Wonderland. This is one of the classic carny games of all time. And I would expect more from the NYPD myself. A little bit more accuracy, but... We started off playing this shooting game. We were just trying to figure out who was the better shot out the group of us. At one point, I'm just shooting the gun, and this one guy out of nowhere comes up and he kind of challenged me to a competition. So the competition got pretty intense because he would make a shot, then I'd make a shot, and went back and forth, back and forth. We got down to the last shot, and he took it, and he won. Big congratulations, got our pictures taken. But what was interesting was that he just goes, one more shot, one more shot, and then I'm like, okay, and then I go, but we're gonna do it with her eyes shut, pointed the gun, took the shot without looking, and I hit two targets. They became really competitive, and he just kind of stiff-armed the camera. He's like, no, 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 you can't, don't feel me taking this shot, because he knew he couldn't do it. Nice to see friendly fire with court guns. Yeah. Beautiful. That was great. No, that was fun. That's quite serious. Actually. He got into it. Did you see how tense that guy? <laughs> Pretty intense that We just started off just as fun. You know, just scooping around. Just and then, oh, here you he go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> fun at the fun fair. Hey, it was a clever name. Fun fair, fun fair, fun. I've read guidebooks that say this is a non-working metro, it's purely for show. Now, if you've ever been here at sort of 8 o'clock at rush hour in the morning, <laughs> then you can ask. Where do we end up at the end of the day? Goodness knows. <laughs> I've never known. I think we're going from glory to reunification, glory are we? Station. Oh, we're going to glory station. Here is the prosperity station. Oh, here, yeah, so we're going from prosperity to glory. Thank you. Fair enough. It may seem bizarre to be in a metro, but it sort of fits the theme of big grand things that are being shown off as part of national pride. Station names seem pretty interesting. We have Glory, we have Prosperity. Glory, Torch, Victory, Reunification, Paradise, War Victory, Innovation and Restoration. 
the platform for the subway here is 100 meters, not 100 feet, 100 meters underground. That's because they figured if they ever got attacked, this would be a safe place for the people to go in case, you know, bombs are being dropped in the cities. Hello. I've heard people say that people won't look at you and that, you know, especially with a camera, they'll just keep their heads down and, and keep going. It's pure bullshit because everywhere we've gone so far, you smile and wave at people and they wave back. It's awesome. Seeing these people in just everyday activity, it's pretty interesting to me. People watching is a big part of travel for me. This is one of the few chances on this trip so far we've been able to just observe daily life, and that's a treat. So this is uh, glory and you've got fireworks above us, you've got big torches at the sides and, and of course then you've got Mount Pektu. Very good, yeah, good. That's Mr. Bonner, <laughs> he's a famous model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for long foreheads and short hair and hairy <laughs> chest, it's, a, it's a, a modern fashion. In the West, it's very fashionable to be hairy and slightly overweight. This is the Children's Palace in Pyongyang. It's huge. The whole building is over 300,000 square meters, so it's a huge, huge complex for kids to be able to come here after school, do different types of art, music, crafts, and sports, whatever it is. smoke on the water. We've kind of got a whirlwind tour of this place so far and now we've been whisked into here just in time to see a performance of some sort that the kids are going to put on. unwavering belief in the Juche ideology, the isolation that they have here. And schools like this, maybe it's one of them, maybe it's all of them put together, but there's an incredibly intact culture here in DPRK. It's actually a great thing to see the amount of emphasis that's put on the children and the arts and music. This emphasis is going to allow North Korea to keep its culture for generations to come.
stadium is Kim Il Sung Stadium, and it's where for all the football matches sort of take place. And the stadium we're going to is the highest capacity in the world. It's the Mayday Stadium. It's 150,000 seater. But wow. it's uh, 150,000, yeah. and you'll see over 100,000 performers in it for the mass games. What time does the mass games? Ah, uh, 7:30. Here, the more understanding you get for how fiercely proud North Koreans are, but they're so proud of these games that they actually open up the country more than any other time of the year. This is unbelievable. We're just watching some of the kids go through warm-up routines with these flashcards, these color cards, and the whole other side of the stadium here are people holding cards. Look at the pixel on your television, right? Well. Imagine every little pixel is a child. You just think of that. This is, oh, here we go. <laughs> this is epic. What better way to experience a culture that very few people ever get to witness than to go see the mass games? It tells a very powerful story of DPRK's history from the time of Japanese occupation in the early 1900s all the way through to present day, paying homage to the great leader Kim Il-sung and the current leader Kim Jong-il. Somewhere between 80 and 100,000 people performing in unison. It's a mix of martial arts, music, live theater, gymnastics, dance. It's all of this stuff mixed together into honestly one of the most incredible live shows you will ever witness. Within an hour and a half, no one's making any errors. From the minute it starts to the minute it ends, it's pure perfection. You watch one person, you watch what they're doing, they're running over here, they're doing this, they're flipping, they're spinning, and that's one person of like 80,000 people. Will I ever see anything like this ever again? I don't think so. And I thought to myself, this would be probably the coolest thing I'm ever going to see. And then it tops anything I could ever imagine. There's been a growing struggle over the past three years of travel to find places that are still pure in a way and as untouched as possible. And knowing how rare an experience like this is in the world, this is the kind of destination you strive for. Last stop! Well, 
penultimate stop. There's one more to go. But uh, we're off, right? Everybody got everything? Let's, uh, let's get out. Let's get out of here. We got a train to catch back to Beijing. It's going to take us the better part of 24 hours, but it leaves this morning. You, you don't want to come along with us mm. on the uh, journey? On me? To China? To, vacation to, to Canada? Yeah, if you ever find yourself in Canada, you have to look us up. You're, you're more than welcome to stay with us anytime you want. So, what was that? Yeah. I'd rather be bitten by a rabid dog. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Best driver. Best yes. driver in all of DP Arcades. Thank you very much. I got a gift here. You have to take care of them though. You gotta feed them at least twice a day. You can't get water on them. You can't feed them after midnight. And lots of whiskey. He likes whiskey. Oh, whiskey. Oh. Wow. It's a whiskey Where? bear. Whiskey. <laughs> whiskey panda. One last time. There we go. <laughs> so yes, I will take care of this one. It was the most fun you know, tour. Oh yeah, the you, most fun? Yeah, being with you. I feel like I spend my holidays yeah, during, this, during your stay with you. With Thank, me. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kim. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Be safe. Uh, even I have to say, after 16 years of travel, this is one they must remember. Goodbye, lads. Oh, Nick. Horaji, Horaji, Horaji. La 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 Thankfully, it went in the maybe pile, eh? I fought for that maybe pile. And maybe that was the best idea of the whole trip. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. One last one. High five. <laughs> Our visit to the DPRK was everything I hoped it would be and definitely worth the efforts of getting there because of the other side of the coin that we saw. And most of all, to be an ambassador for the outside world. I think there's a lot of appreciation on seeing us there and showing our interest and our respect for their culture, especially with the younger generation that can work wonders. Definitely what Nick has been doing over the course of 15 years, striving to bring the right people in, is definitely making an impact. To have a chance to understand what makes this place so unique, not too many people have that opportunity. We are a lucky few. How do you explain it? You can't explain a country like this. You can only experience it. I'm glad I got to see with my own eyes and walk away with an experience of a lifetime. <laughs>